hey guys you're welcome back to my channel this is Marina girl i'm super excited to have you back on my channel if you're new here you're welcome if you're my subscriber i really do appreciate you always coming back to watch so in today's video i'll be sharing with you what it takes to actually be a nigerian man i saying i will be sharing with you the responsibilities bestowed upon a nigerian man especially if he is the first son now a lot of people may not understand what i'm saying but just hold on maybe the message didn't just pass out right because i will be sharing with you you know the responsibilities that a nigerian man gets just from being a nigerian man and also those he gets just from being the first son of the family now let me break it down because even i'm beginning to confuse myself let me speak it in simple terms because you know i don't even know what i'm talking about anymore i'm just gonna tell you this a nigerian man from the moment a nigerian man is born a responsibility is bestowed upon him okay now this responsibility is even worse if he is the first son of the family now let me not forget to mention that this video was inspired by a sister who asked me to make this video and for you sister i am making this video do not forget i talk nigerian man culture everything surrounding nigerian man our culture our traditions so in case you have a question feel free to ask me when i have time i'll make a video responding to you because as you all know life got busy and i'm being a mother i'm working and a lot of things but do not forget that if you have a question <laughs> reach out to me okay ask and you should receive so she said to me please talk about the responsibilities of a Nigerian man especially the responsibilities of the first sons when their parents pass on now let me use this opportunity to tell you that Nigerians like I've always told you people we are a people of tradition we are a people of culture we have our cultures, we have our traditions. And that is why sometimes when people say, oh, forget culture, well, uh, we are Christians, uh, you guys are not Christians, you need to forget culture. I keep telling them that culture and tradition is something that binds a Nigerian man, especially the Igbo man, especially them. Okay? Even the Yorubas too. Even the houses. We all have our different cultures. But I will be basing everything I'll be talking to you about today. I will be basing everything from the Igbo perspective because I'm Delta Igbo, my husband is Igbo, and I've lived amongst the Igbo, so at least I know what I'm talking about. Now, a young Nigerian man grows up with responsibility. I know that in other parts of the world, when a child grows up, they grow up, they get into the society, they get a job, and they begin to live their life, and they are happy. And this is good, but this is their own culture. This is the way that they have grown. In case you do not know what culture means, culture means, you know, this the things that you've been imbibed in, the accepted norms, the accepted traditions, the things you grew up knowing, how your people live. So just believe it that no, no people, yes, no people will live without a culture or a tradition. Forget it that people are not saying our culture or tradition just because they are from various parts of the world. But you have a culture. Your way of life is your culture. Whatever you do as a people and other people actually do and is accepted by your society, it is your culture. Now, tradition is different from culture. Tradition is in Igbo, it is called omenana. Omenana means the things that are done by a people and must be done by those people for a certain tradition to be complete. Now, let me break it down for you so you understand. Let's just say Nigerian man lost his father or lost his mother. The first thing that happens is they will call the family. And if they want to call the family, they will always choose to call the first son, okay? Now, the wife will be in the know, but they will always choose to call the first son. Take for example, in our own case, my own case, when I lost my father, fine, I wasn't in school, in the university that time, but I can tell you something that they were constantly calling on my brother, my elder brother, who was at that time, just, he actually just finished, yeah, he just finished university, he just finished his service, and he was either still looking for a job, yeah, as at that time, he was still looking for a job, but... As tradition demands, the first son is the one who's responsible 
He's the one who's going to see to everything that will be done. Now, let's just say he's not buoyant enough, he's not making money, and money for the burial of, say, my father is going to come from other people, say, aunties, my mom, and other people around. Still, they were beckoning on him. They were calling him. If they needed to do anything, they would call him. If they needed to clarify anything, they would call him. Now, he's being called and told things that needed to be done. Because, let me tell you something. I've seen all the traditions, I've seen all the nationalities. I know that when people die, they do the necessary things. Some people do cremation, some people do the normal burial. They don't even waste time, they don't do any big deal. But no, because we have culture. In our culture, a person doesn't just die and you bury him. Mm -mm. Burial has a right, okay? We have burial rights in tradition. And those rights will all be taken care of before a person is successfully buried. People do not pray for people to die at all because the money you spend in a burial sometimes is even more than the money someone else spends having his wedding. Okay? So a burial is a very expensive thing because we bury our people with pride. We bury, you want to bury your, your, your parents so that they rest in peace. You want to bury them so that they are proud of you. So there is a lot at stake. There is a lot of money to be spent. And if you are the first son, I've seen situations whereby people's parents die and they cry because they don't have money for burials. For the burial. I've seen a situation where someone's mom or someone's dad died and they're like, Oh God, where are we going to get money to bury them? Yes, things like this happen. And sometimes when people's parents die and they do not have enough money to bury them, you will notice that they will keep them. They will keep them. Some people will keep them and bury them later. No matter how bad it is, you have to bury your parents and you have to give them a befitting burial. So what some people will do is to bury them, give them just a small befitting burial, as small as they can manage. And later, there is something called a second burial, just in case you do not know. When your parents die, sorry, when a parent dies and he's buried, okay, for the sake of being buried, that is, you're burying them because you do not have a lot of money to do all the rights. So what you do is bury them normally, call people, they will, they will mourn him, do everything in the church. And let me tell you, I'm not saying this because we're traditionalists, we're Christians, we're all Christians. So the first thing that happens is on the day of the burial, you have a service of songs, just like when my father died and even when my mom died two years ago. I'm sure if you've been my subscriber for a long time, you will know I told you about those things. You will go, okay, now that I'm even saying it, I'll see if I get some pictures and I'll show to you. Like, there was a lot. We spent money. We spent money to bury our mom the last two years. And even when my, my dad died, that was, uh, that's at least 10 years, more than 10 years back. We also still spent money. Okay, more than 15 years back. We also still spent money. But as the day goes by, things are getting so expensive and even the children cannot escape this expense because you have to give a befitting burial. Now, going back to what I was saying, I was saying that when your parents die, when you're sorry, when, when a parent dies, you need to do the needful. If you cannot do the needful as at that time when they died, you give them a befitting burial, which is called the first burial. Then later, when you're able and capable, you give them the final or the second burial. Yes. Someone who's been buried and forgotten and you didn't bury him in the right way because you were not having that money or you weren't buoyant enough to bury them in the normal traditional way. Your traditional people, your village will not accept that this person has been buried. It will be called back. It will be called back. And if you don't understand, I will let you know. I've made a video about this before when my mom died. I came back from the burial and I complained about what happened. Now, let me share just a little bit so you understand. Now, my mom died and my elder brother and my elder sister, they were going about trying to get all the necessary lists, the things we needed to buy, the this, the that, the that. And we got the shocking news that we couldn't bury our mom because our grandma has not been buried properly. That they did her burial, but they didn't do a right that was supposed to have been done as at that time. So, because her right was not concluded, 
we weren't going to bury our mom until our grandmother's right gets concluded then we can talk about burying our mom now questioning what is that right that wasn't concluded they told us it is called ibuishi so apparently after burying your parents after doing blah 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 there is a tradition that says that you have to bring a cow okay to the people you have to bring there's a cow that cow is used as in i don't know what it's used for but that cow will be killed and shared amongst the community mm -hmm. yes so cut long story short before my mom before they agreed that we we're going to bury my mom my grandmother's cow was bought and brought to them so that when they went to get the cow that would be used for my mom's burial we got three cows one for my grandmother's burial that is to conclude my grandmother's burial who died when i was a kid and my mom who just died two years ago okay so one cow was given to them to conclude that right that wasn't done and then the other one was used for my mom's burial now this is tradition please don't go about telling me about christianity yes we're all christians we have our tradition it's just it it is what it is and you can't change it if we refused to give the cow to them no burial would have taken place now let's talk about the the, the, the responsibility that was bestowed on my brother as the first son it was too much a good thing we didn't leave him alone okay but whenever they call they call on my brother okay so just because we knew that yes this is our mom we need to help him whatever they tell him it comes in and he tells us and we all rally around and we all do the needful but imagine if we weren't buoyant enough to help my brother he'll be left alone it is his sole responsibility to bury his parents it is the first son it is so like i was saying before i know that in all the nationalities that people grow up live home and sometimes some of them do not even care about their parents some of them their parents get old and they keep them in, in uh, sorry and they keep them in old people's homes but for us it's not like that because this is just where we found ourselves we are africans we have tradition and we have to follow and that is why when i come to you people with things like okay this is what you should look out for going for a nigerian man this is what you should have at the back of your mind yes sister thank you for bringing this topic because it's really very important just in case you're married to a nigerian man and let's just say he lost his mom or his dad and they're beckoning him to do the needful and you're asking him oh babe why are you sending all our money home my dear he's just doing what he's supposed to do he's just doing what he's supposed to do it is his duty to take care of his parents burial Something else you should know is that we, like I always say, and I've always said before, we have family values. We have family, you know, orientation. We are very, we're deeply rooted, okay? When it comes to family bond, we're deeply rooted. Sometimes the first son has a lot of responsibilities, even to the younger siblings, because let's just say they lost their parents. Now they are the only ones available. For example, me for example if i were younger and let's say now i'm an orphan my, i've lost my mom i've lost my dad although we had our mom up to just two years ago now imagine we were younger very younger and then we have we lost our parents who will take care of us our, our, our elder ones of course so you will see elder ones toiling toiling every day just to take care of their younger ones and that's why a lot of us when we go abroad they keep sending monies back home they keep sending money so that their, their younger ones can, you know, get the life that they need. This is our family values. And I feel like this video is getting so long. But if there is something that I forgot to mention in this video, do remind me and I'll make a video of that. So I guess this is actually the best way. If you need me to answer the question, just ask me. And hopefully, once I have time, I'll be able to make the video. Yes, it's my birthday and I've succeeded in making this video. So sister, I hope I've been able to satisfy your uh your question if i didn't please let me know then i can add other things so if you're nigerian watching this can you share what you know about you know the responsibilities best old on the first sons especially when it comes to burying their parents okay or when it comes to them losing a parent what they do okay my people thanks for watching so without further ado do have a lovely day do have a blessed day stay happy stay blessed day. bye bye